part two. So um, last time I was talking super quick, and so this time I tried to slow down because I heard myself um, the uh, the first part of the tutorial, and it was like super super difficult to comprehend. And so this time I upgraded my microphone, so you can hear my voice uh, much better. I hope uh, because it sounded a little bit cracky, and so. Um, this time I hope it's easier to follow. Anyway, we left ourselves last time with uh, the room made based on the references on the scaled drawings. So we scaled every drawings we had and, um, and we built our room on that. And so we know that our room now is perfectly scaled and also we divided and we organized our scene so that's much easier for me, for example, to say I want uh, to hide the floor, I want to bring up back the ceiling and the reference and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, mm, I continue burping. This was actually, this was actually pretty loud. I'm sorry for that. But burping is part of being a 3D artist. Um, if you not burp, then you're a liar. Anyway. Um, now that we have this this situation, we're gonna build actually the we're gonna build the furniture. So we bring back the reference. We go into top view by pressing seven. Um, we put our 3D cursor on our floor. Yes, and then we hide our floor because we don't need it. Actually, we can hide the entire room because we know it's scale. So we know the room is it's built on these drawings, and so we're gonna block out first the room by adding a plane and by just bring it where we need it. So we have a gap here, so it's not actually directly on the wall. We select the edge by pressing two into edit mode and we bring it like there. You already have to think um, what are you gonna do later on? Because if we bring like this, we could, so I can show you both. You could do like this, what I do usually, and then extrude it from here or you can bring it there it's a little bit it's a little difference actually it's not trickier but there and then you edge an, uh, you add an edge loop and then you match that edge there then we take this one we press e and y by the way if you see uh, the solid mode popping and popping out like this it's because we have actually the reference on the same plane on the object we're creating so it's like flickering a little bit and so the the computer doesn't know how to read it properly properly and so i have to slow down my speaking and so it just appears and disappears sometimes but don't be scared about that and so we have our um, base we have the main form of our kitchen right here if we go into wireframe you can see it and so this is actually um we could we could just block it out so we go into edit mode we press a to select everything we don't need for now the edge length um, going to front view with everything everything selected we can already see for example that it's not somehow i don't know why it's not on the floor and so we can bring it up until it matches the floor then we go again to edit mode select everything press e to extrude and we go right to the top and then we have our kitchen made up um, and so if we bring back the room and we hide the references so this could be like a nice block out it's sometimes useful to just under understand proportions when you are building some uh, times i found myself using the 3d just for the concept because then you you are able to understand uh, volumes is you if you don't have a very strong 3d imagination so you can just put down the volumes and you can actually see uh, how much space uh, space space how much space you have and you can see how it how it feels the room how if it's too tight, if it's fine. Anyway, um, so we can bring the reference back, we can hide the room because we don't need it for now. And so we have the block out. Um, the kitchen actually, uh, if we have a look, it's made from the tabletop. Of course, this is helpful for me because I did the drawings. And so if you didn't do the drawings by yourself, um, just you have to understand them first. And that's a good thing if you understand what you're doing. Anyway, we have the um, we have the tabletop. I think my voice is kind of disappearing, but maybe it's just me. Um, you have the, I mean, uh, it's it's much quieter now, but I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Let me see. Well, I don't know. It's fine. It should be fine. It says it's recording. Okay, we're good to go. Um, we have the tabletop. We have the actual um, furniture piece, and we have the front and the skirting board. So we have four different. Um, 
pieces. And uh, sometimes it's helpful if you build it in 3D, like the same way I have to, I had to pop my ears. Um, it's actually easy if you build it in 3D, the same way you would build it um, like in real life. And so what we're gonna do now, we have our block out and I would suggest we start with the tabletop because it's the easiest thing to do. Uh, we're going to edit mode and then we can just make like an edge loop by control R, -R and then bring it, um, bring it there and there we have our um, tabletop. And then um, it's also very useful at first to divide the things and so we select everything. We could select one by one or we could select like this and there are different types uh, of selection. You can make select and similar and then for example normal and it selects everything looking up and then um, you can select by pressing by holding alt and shift and going on to the edge it selects like the edge loop and so we see that now we have selected all the edge loops all around once we have this selection we press p and selection is fine and so we divided this into object objects um, so we have one the tabletop and the bottom uh, what we also do for example is to close it up and so I select this let me see because sometimes it works if I select just one edge if 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 there are four corners and you select just one edge and you press F then it closes up it, it closes it automatically for you because it understand that's like a face um, if we press it again but it doesn't understand properly which edge you because it's considering like the 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 nearest edges so it's not working like this but we just have to select this three and press F and then we press this uh, the next four edges and then we do it and then we select this tree F here F and now we have our tabletop finished so we can bring back the base and so we have the two things here divided if we go into wireframe then we can see that we have a little gap between the body of the uh, of the furniture and the front of the furniture the front is actually flush with the tabletop and um, now we have to think how how can we do it like properly what I suggest for example we could do we could take this face for example and go into frame a wireframe and just physically bring it back until it matches here but we what we could do is by selecting the reference we can go here and enable transparency and then make it a little bit more transparent so that when we are when we are working we can see it better anyway we brought it back where it belongs <laughs> and uh, and so we see this little gap and we need to do the same for the other sides we already did it we already and that's why it's very useful to have this setup um, where all the elevations and the ground floor are like placed because we just have to press three and we are in side view and if we go into um, wireframe then we can see that we are in the correct position um, only thing it I don't know it could be if it could be a problem but if we move just this face then this edge will stay the same so I selected the, fa the this face I press 2 and to go into edge selection I select also these two edges and I go on the other side I go into the other side and I select also the shift and the other edges and so one when we move now we move everything together and so it's aligned properly by the way, I just pressed like um, slash on my is it slash numpad slash yes slash on on the <laughs> on the numpad to isolate the object you are um, you are selecting so you don't have to uh, hide the other ones just to press uh, the uh, slash anyway we go into side view and wireframe and we place it where we need it like there. And then we make the same for the other side. We can go like we like we saw before. I don't know we saw it before because I recorded this tutorial like four times. But if we go like for example in one, um, uh, and we select in edge selection mode, we could do also two. We could go also three. No three. It's not useful because then it won't select it behind. So let's press one and select all the edges because if we were for example in solid mode, and um, we go frontal view and let me deselect and I select this then it selects actually just the 
um, things you can you can see and not the things behind. But if you are in wireframe, you are allowed to see through and also to select through. And so we selected everything. It's much, much easier. So we could have done it also before. Anyway, we take it here, G, X or X, X is in Italian. We bring it where it belongs. And now we have, if we go back, we have our little gap. Beautiful. Then, uh, so we have the body. Actually, the body, I think it's not finished yet because as we can see, the body actually comes until here. And so you guessed it, the same thing we gotta do. We press one into wireframe uh, edit mode. We press one, with that we go into vertex selection mode. We select the bottom edges, bottom vertices. Uh, vertex, vertices, vertices, uh, G and Z to bring it up and we align them exactly where we need them. So it's really nice. For example, now I see that I, I didn't do the same for this ones. And so this, as you can see from the front, this is actually the, the, sorry for the interruption. I had problem with the cable. Um, brr, 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 brr. Ah, yes, if you can see these edges right here are not aligned properly and it, it disturbed me a lot. And so what we can do, because at the beginning, like we did here, we can select everything. We didn't do it here. And so now it's not aligned anymore, but we can select them. And then we already did, I think last time, if, if we didn't, I think we did it last time. Um, we press here and we go into vertex um, selection. It's actually a snapping tool. And what is very useful if you enable it and if you move something, then it snaps to the nearest vertex and um, that uh, I find it to leave it always enabled. It's very tricky because then you're not allowed to do something else. So what I do, I leave it, uh, I leave it, I leave it uh, deselected and it actually selects itself while you're holding control. And so every time you need it, then you hold control and it snaps to the nearest vertex. In this case, we snap it here. And now it's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. ah because <laughs> of course he says yeah this is the the nearest vertex and so if if you want to place it there then you make this strange form so we just go into front view G and then X and so X is cost constrained on the X axis and if we move it there then it's perfectly aligned nice um, so now we have uh, the body now we have the tabletop we have uh, the body and then it's missing the front and the skirting board uh, down there. So for the skirting board, of course, it's always useful, useful to start from something that you already have. Like for example, we could start from the body or from the tabletop, it's the same. Um, I would take the body just because we don't have the top and the bottom, we don't need them. And so we can duplicate it, pressing Shift D, ask to cancel the movement. And so it's still duplicated, but we didn't move them, moved it not them, uh, we bring it down to the floor, shift, uh, sorry, tab to go into edit mode. We, uh, we select the top ones, we bring them down. So leave it tranky, tranky it's an Italian word to say like with ease, <laughs> a little bit higher. Uh, we select these edges because actually it's down here and we bring them there and done. And then we do the, uh, the, th the same thing on the other side and we bring them there and now if you if we save control s control s save okay um, and now we have the tabletop we have uh, the body and we have the skirting board of course by pressing f2 we can skirting board we can rename everything so it's easy to find them and this is the body and this is uh, the table, table, top, 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 top. Um, this tree, oh, shup, shup, shup. this guys, we can uh, bring it, for example, by pressing M into new connection and we call it kitchen. Pop, pop. And we have it here and so we can do like this. Um, only thing it's missing, only thing is missing are the fronts. Mm, the fronts that you can see here and here here and so the fronts a little bit different because you have this um, this uh, Schlitz it's called in German because you don't have a handle but you just have uh, like a, a a gap where you can uh, take the things and open them and the bottom ones are pushed to open so we won't have any handle 
Um, the thing is uh, nothing. The thing is nothing. We just have to build them. And to do that, like we said before, try to start from something you already have. And so we can select, for example, this three faces, shift D, ESC, P, selection. And then you have this geometry here that we can use to build our pieces. Actually, I think it's, um, it's easier if we select, if you divide them again between the three, P, selection, P, selection. So we have the three fronts divided. And now, for example, let's go into this one. Actually, we can select the three of them because now we're gonna do operations that allows, um, that are the same on all three of them. And since I think 2.9 or 2.8, it's possible to go into um, 2.8, I think it was, or something like this. It's possible to edit multiple objects at the same time. And this is like a huge present. Um, anyway, we go into wireframe, we select the three of them, we select the top um, edges and we bring them down because as we said, we have this little gap. And for example, as we can see, we have a, a cut in the middle and the middle. And so what we can do is like by pressing Ctrl R is making a edge loop or a edge cut. In this case, it's it doesn't appear to doing it because I'm doing it on the sides. And so of course, if I go like on the side, it's doing it there. And then it's actually very tricky to do it there. It won't do it there. And so I just select this one. Okay. And then I reselect the three of them. Go into front view, bam. And now we have the cut. I knew it was in the middle, so I didn't have to change it. But anyway, if we would have uh, needed to change it, just select the three of them, edit mode, and then we can move the gap or the division between the rows. Um, now that we have this, we can select, uh, we can go into edit mode again and press Control R. And then you could go like, you can go like Control R and then select one here. And then you could go the same here. But sometimes, for example, if it if it's exactly in the middle, I mean, if the distance between the sides is the same, what we what you can do is make one exactly in the middle. If you cancel the movement, then exactly in the middle. And then by Control B, you add a bevel. Um, and since it's flat, since it's flat, <laughs> um, you just will um, have the same distance from each side. And so now, if you do like this, then we have it perfectly centered. And don't care if 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 it's not um, aligned with the drawings because the drawings are not 100% correct because with the importing and this scaling, it's not a mathematical scaling just an, mere, more uh, an eyeballing thing. And anyway, we have this thing here. Then we can go, we can select, for example, also multiple objects objects to go into isolation mode. We can select this front and his um, elevation and we press tab uh, slash, I call it slash, I don't know, it's slash. Um, we go into side view, wireframe, and then this is actually a little bit different than the other one because it's wider. And then we make the edge loop in the middle, Control B. And you can see, for example, here is a little, and here we notice something. It's, it doesn't look that it's in the middle because if we have a closer look, uh, we can see that the fronts are not actually starting from the edge. And this is another thing, uh, uh, like I said before, you have to understand that the drawings, because of course, if we would do like uh, the edges here, uh, then what would happen if we would like, for example, extrude both of them, then they, they would collide, of course. And so what, uh, what the thing is, opla, what the thing is, is that the, let me select again these two, is that the fronts are actually not wide as uh, the, um, let me go into tab mode, is not wide as the body. And so we can select this edge here. Is it selected? Let me go select this edge here and bring it where it belongs, like there. And now, of course, if we do the edge loop in the middle and we divide them again, then now it's aligned, of course. Um, same thing, of course, we had it here, because if you have a look here, then it's the same. And so what we can do again, you have to try to think how to apply the things you know. For example, here we know we have to go inside by the same amount on both sides. 
And so what we could do, we could take the single ones and shift them until it's aligned, or you could do, uh, you can press both of them, scale them, so S on the X axis, and then scale them inside. And so you can see that you have the exact same dimension on both sides. And so now this is aligned and the only one is missing is this one. So we select that one and here's elevation. We're going to side view wireframe. This is actually, for example, not centered. So it's not working what we did before, but uh, if we select it and then we can just make an edge loop here and we make an edge loop there. And also we don't have to forget that Oh, this is actually this is actually already there this is this is tricky and this scares me a little bit i don't know why this is this is aligned now uh, so we have to dive into it and see it a little bit more why are you aligned did we did we move this i think we didn't move this part oh look at this oh crappy crappy crept crabs oh we didn't move this side why let me go into side view Ah, we did. <laughs> we didn't move. Oh yeah, we moved this side. Did we? I mean, it's aligned. And then, wait, wait, wait. Uh, my mind is kind of tripping right now. So it's aligned with the body. But if I select, if I select this one, ah. Now it's everything clear. So it's not aligned. <laughs> My brain fart. So we select this. Sorry for that. But this is actually the things you have to consider. Not the things you have to consider, but you will be all the time struggling between uh, trying to understand stuff and why things are not working. And this is a very important thing that you are aware of, um, of what you're doing. And so we aligned it like that. And now we are proudly owners of nothing because it's not ready yet. Um, what we can do, actually, we can still, um, we can press Control J, for example, we can join them back together because um, they are separate inside. And so, and so we don't need them actually right now to have a different object for them. And so it could be like just front, fronts. Okay, and now we have to add a little bit of thickness of course because our fronts have thickness so what we can do we could just add like into the modifier to this would be the easiest and the better way uh, we could add like a solidif solidify modifier and give it a thickness but then of course we can see we won't have uh, this edge here and um, and this is what we want this is a detail actually we want and so um, let me see first if it had added the solidify on all the sides. No, I don't think so. Oh yeah, it added in the same direction. Okay, so um, what we can do, we can do the solidif solidify. We could add, for example, also a bevel, a custom beveled edge, but um, it's too tricky in my opinion. So what we can do, first of all, let me see. If we add a bevel, for example, after that, it's always nicer if you have a bevel in your furniture because nothing is, um, like the perfect ooh, the perfect uh, 90 degree edge doesn't exist uh, in nature and also um, the thing is that um, a 90 degree edge super sharp which doesn't exist in nature because you will you will always have a face um, facing the camera or facing you and so light will always be reflected uh, also in a minimal amount and so like a little bevel it's you, you will always need a little bevel and it's incredible how much of a difference it makes uh, when you do the render at the end um, because this is one of the subtle things um, that you that maybe you don't notice actively so you don't saying oh there is a bevel there of course now you know it so you notice it um, but it's something that uh, your brain just processed as true and so it does you don't you know sometimes you look at something and you think oh this is this is fake and so try to understand uh, stuff and try to to understand how things work, how light works and everything and everything. Mm. Anyway, uh, okay, and now what we could do, we could do single drawers and blah, blah, blah. But the thing is that I don't want, because I'm lazy and because we don't need it, um, to make single drawers, we can apply the same procedure as procedure as before, uh, this time without separating the object objects if we press y 
it actually divides um, the geometry. So it, it creates duplicates, um, vertices, uh, where uh, on the boundaries from the area you selected. Well, let me select this. And this brings us that if we add a solidify, it doesn't change anything because the, uh, the, uh, they are in the exact same position. But once we add a bevel, then you can see that we have the division of our drawer and we can control it then. And so we can make the gap bigger or smaller. And that's actually, this is actually super nice. And, and so we, we just have to make the same for all of that. And so select and Y, select Y, select Y. Why do you select? Why do you select? Select Y, select Y, select Y. I forgot if I, Y, 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 and Y. And so, poof, it poof. And now we have our divisions, look at that. It was super easy. And now our drawers are a little bit colliding. And we could adjust that also with the strengths. That's why it's very useful to have modifiers. This is, this is, this is wrong. Why is it like this? So our, this is, hmm, let me see this. Why are, why is it there? Why? I think that was the problem before I didn't notice because we didn't brought the um, the tabletop there. Oh, now it's perfect. Save because it's correct. Anyway, um, it's super easy to have uh, the modifiers because we can adapt stuff. The thing is that in this case, um, we don't uh, have this type of edge. We could add like a custom edge, a custom beveled edge, but it would add it anywhere, uh, everywhere. And so what you can do, what I do in this case is, since it's just one object, I duplicate this object, I make a new collection and I call it unapplied. And then we can hide this because we don't need it. But because now we have to apply by pressing, sh hovering over the modifier and pressing uh, control, yeah, now I went back, uh, pressing control A, it applies, for example, the bevel, bam, it applies it. And when you apply it, it means that you actually change the geometry. And so uh, let me go back. And so we apply just the solidify so that uh, now we can modify it because now it's actually, it has actually a geometrical thickness that you can uh, modify and we, it's a, a, a destructive way of working. And um, we did this unapplied because if we do something wrong, then we still have the unapplied um, uh, object with the solidify modifier and, and then we are able to go back. Um, so we're here and now we can make our custom edge because if we go into front view, deselect everything, go into the sides, wireframe like always, we take these edges and we just bring them back, uh, down, not back. Uh, make the same here, deselect everything, select those edges and bring them down. For example, we could, in this case, we may, we press G and Z and then, so it's, it's constrained on the Z axis. They're not shifting around, but just in the Z axis. So they're moving just vertically and we press control to snap it um, where we did the other bevel for the other um, front. And now it's exactly the same as you can see. And then we go into front view. We deselect by pressing Alt A or AA. <laughs> I don't know why I never used AA, but you know that you can do it. AA, so G, Z, and and connect it there. Okay. Now we save, and now look at that. We have this beautiful front and this beautiful kitchen. If we bring um, back the room and we hide the references, now we did the kitchen starting from the drawings and this is actually the the real dimension of the stuff we uh, we also did uh, the um this nice detail and the thing is that of course since we have the bevel then we can we can uh we can adjust how big we want to see this um this gap we can also round it a little bit more if you want we can give it more an edgy look um, I don't know why uh, I always try to have one edge in the middle. Like for example, if you would have two, you still have, as you can see here, you still have like a pointy edge um, in the middle. And I think for light reflections, I don't know why, maybe it's wrong. It's just something I do. I always leave um, like uh, this body. I would say it in Italian. I don't know how it's called in English. It's like one, three, five, seven, uh, like un unpair. I'm, I'm stupid right now. I don't know how to 
say it, but it's like not not um, square number. Oh, let me let me let me look for it. Ah, oh, wait a second. Can you see DJ? This body in English. Odd. Oh, so I just go with odd numbers, and and so that you always have a face reflecting uh, in the edge in the in the so the normal of a one face is always pointing perfectly at 45 degree in the edge in the middle of the edge anyway i think i leave it at one because it's fine and as i was saying we can adjust it and just make it um big as we want um of course we can do the same here for example we can add a bevel and then make it like one millimeter and we can add a bevel also on the body and we can make one millimeter and we save again and that's beautiful now we have the uh, bottom of the kitchen it's already 32 minutes and so mm, and so the next time uh, i will do i will already have done this once and uh, i got a notification here and um then I think we can add some details like the sink and stuff. Um, sink, 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 sink. Everybody start to sink, and uh, and then we can start maybe uh, with a couple of materials and stuff. And so um, that's what we're gonna do. So I hope it was helpful. I don't know. Maybe I talk too much. I try to be super tight with the timing, but I cannot. I'm I. I Physically, I cannot speak um, less than what I speak because I speak a lot. And this is also less for me. Uh, this is already less for me. But anyway, uh, let's bring up everything. So if you want to have some kind of, sometimes it's good for your soul to have some kind of um, of uh, Bestätigung, I would say in German. We just go here and we press R, Z and rendered and you already see your beautiful kitchen that's going on nice so see you next time in part three and we start with lighting and materials and whatever else we need to do bye bye